All right, we're going to do a video here by request. Um, this came after uh, doing my uh, video on uh, XY mode and uh, and Lissajous patterns. And uh, one of the very common uses for uh, uh, using a, a Lissajous pattern on a scope is to do uh, use a circuit like this thing called an octopus. It's literally been around for decades. And it's a very simple circuit that uh, applies a current limited voltage across a component. It could be a resistor, a diode, an LED, something like that. And then we basically measure the voltage across the device and the current going through it. And lots of circuits, to, you can Google you know, Octopus Component Tester and you'll get you know, dozens of different variants of circuits. This one I printed out because it was kind of clear. But in the end, you can really kind of simplify that down to a, a simple circuit like this. It makes it easy, easy to understand. So you can basically see we've got a, a step-down transformer. Um, it's just powered off the line. This, you know, it could be a 6.3 volt old filament transformer or whatever. All right, and uh, basically we have a current limit resistor and a set of probes that we connect to our device. Okay, so we're basically setting up a current limited voltage, uh, alternating voltage, going through uh, our device under test, and uh, by we can connect essentially, you know, from one side of the device to the other you know, into say channel one of the scope and that'll give me the voltage across the device as this test signal is applied. And then if we uh, look at the voltage across the series resistor, that gives me a output voltage that is directly proportional to the current that is flowing. Okay, so very simply uh, now I've got a, a signal representing the voltage across the device and the current flowing through it. If we put that in XY mode, we can plot voltage versus current for a given device. Very, very handy. This old uh, Heathkit scope that I have here actually has a component test function and that's kind of precisely what it does. And uh, so right now I've got the, the test lead you know, coming from the component test port open and this is what you get when it's open because the, the horizontal axis, the x-axis, is representing the voltage as being applied across the device. The vertical axis or vertical deflection is going to be proportional to the current that's flowing through the device. Well, there's no device, so there's no current. I just got a, a, a horizontal bar. If I take and ground, okay, my uh, my connection here, uh, I'll just you know, connect it up to ground here. See what happens is I get a vertical line, okay, and that makes sense, right? Because as we try to turn the voltage up, okay, across the device, there's no resistance there so the current just rockets up and down okay so we so these are two are two extremes from being open circuit to short circuit we have these two extremes so in between there if we have like a resistor we'll get you know kind of a tilted line if we have like a diode we'll have you know maybe an L-shaped line here so I thought it would be fun to kind of you know show this you know Hey, you can kind of scratch build something very, very simple like this, and that's what I did. So I just have an old filament, or actually an old uh, transformer here, and I've just got you know a series resistor right here, and I'm just connecting up to with my probes, and I've got a bunch of components kind of sitting in my my little test board over here. So we'll go look at them. So if we go over here to my scope, let's kind of switch this kind of to uh, have a regular, you know, just two channel mode here, and I've got both channels coming in here. So uh, right now the probe is open. So this voltage here is representing, or this signal is representing the voltage that's being applied to my device. My device is open, so I'm getting no current flow. In fact, what I'll do is I'm going to reduce the scale on these guys and separate them a little bit. So it makes it kind of easy to see. Um, okay, there's my voltage, no current flowing. If I take my probe and I ground it, okay, and then I can see that uh, essentially what happened is my voltage you know, collapsed to zero, and now my, now I've got current flowing. I'm not triggering on it, but that's okay. So uh, there's, now I'm triggering on it there. Okay. So, uh, but that's kind of what what's happening there. So let's look at the extremes now. Okay. Let's go back to let me go back to triggering on that again. If we uh, kind of go back to the X Y mode, and uh, I'm just going to bring my scales back down, and uh, and there's our there's our open circuit waveform. Let's kind of put that right in the center radical. So there's my open circuit waveform. If I ground my probe, my DUT probe, you can see I get my vertical uh, deflection, okay, indicating I've got a short circuit. So if we uh, go across a, a, a an ordinary silicon diode, okay, I've got uh, I've got one sitting right here, okay. If I go across that diode, okay, and come back here, now I can see that familiar you know diode characteristic. As the voltage goes positive, 
we get a point where the diode turns on and boom the current goes up okay as the voltage goes negative okay across the device I get no current flowing so that's essentially what a diode looks like and that tells me hey this diode is good if the diodes would, would, was shorted I'd have a vertical line if the diode were open I'd have a horizontal line so simple little component test I, I know my diode is good all right let's look at a, an LED okay I've got an LED sitting right here so if I connect this guy up to the LED and I look back over on the scope I've got that same characteristic. The difference is, is that I'm turning on at a larger voltage, right? Typically LEDs have got a larger turn on voltage than you know a silicon diode, which might be 0.7 volts. You know, an LED might be one and a half, two, two and a half, three volts, depending on the technology for the diode. Okay. So uh, so that tells me that diode is good. Excuse me, that LED is good. Right? So uh, pretty useful. In fact, a good way to look at this, I'm gonna switch back to kind of the uh, the normal mode here with the scope and let's go back to change my scales okay I separate the signal out here now I can actually see what's happening okay this trace down here is the voltage across the, LED, uh, the LED as the voltage is going negative okay there's no current flowing okay as the voltage goes positive it reaches a point where current starts to flow and the, no, and the voltage then doesn't increase across the diode anymore but as we increase the voltage across that stack you know, of the uh, component and the resistor okay, then the current actually continues to flow. Now as the voltage comes back down okay, goes down below the turn, off, the turn on voltage for the LED the voltage will continue to go negative and the current goes off. So those two waveforms now when you combine them up in the XY mode you get this kind of you know, your typical L-shaped curve that you have that's kind of the characteristic curve in a component tester for an LED. Okay, and uh, so that you know kind of shows that. If we put a capacitor on here, a capacitor is going to just basically provide some impedance and a phase shift. So that's going to basically you know give us a an ellipse of some sort. You know, may, you know the, its size is going to be dependent on its uh, its value and the frequency that we're testing it at. So this is kind of an example that, yeah, that's a good capacitor. If it was open, we'd have a flat line. If it was shorted, we'd have a vertical line. But the fact that we have an ellipse is enough to tell us, hey, that's a, that's a, a capacitor at least is not open or shorted. So what's interesting is that I found this uh, little silica, this little glass diode right here. Okay, so if I can focus on that. No markings on it, so I stuck that in here. And if we kind of stick our probe on that, okay, and go look at my curve tracer, Okay, now I get this characteristic. So what does that mean? Well, this says that as I go forward in voltage, okay, uh, the, the thing's turning on like a normal diode. So that's my normal forward voltage characteristic. But as I go reverse in voltage, instead of staying with no current flowing, it act, at some point, some current does start to flow. That tells me that's a Zener diode. Now, this diode was completely unmarked. I had no idea what it was. But this tells me that it's a Zener and it works. And I can do some further tests to characterize, you know, what where that knee voltage is, and I label it, and now I know I've got a Zener diode for for that voltage. So, uh, so that's kind of a neat uh, a neat way to determine that. So it's a nice thing to very quickly sort through your junk box of components to see if uh, you know if the diodes are good and if they're Zeners or what they are. You can even use it to kind of look at transistors. I've got a transistor right here. Okay, let's kind of grab the uh, center lead here on this TO92. Okay, I know this happens to be an NPN, but you can kind of you know, even ferret out what it is. So if I connect up to the base lead, which is in the center here, okay, and let's look at each of the junctions. Okay, I'm just going to touch them to ground. Okay, so there's one of the junctions here. Okay, looks like a you know normal base emitter junction, kind of like a diode. So that that's good. If we touch the other one here, okay, let's kind of get that over there. Uh, if I could do this with one hand. There we go. So that one is, that's actually, I'm looking at it, it's the base collector junction. Okay. So that one's good. What you may have noticed, let me put the, the base emitter junction back on here. Uh, if we look carefully, we can see that at the very end of the negative side of the base emitter junction, we're starting to get a little bit of breakdown, uh, like a Zener breakdown on the base emitter. And that's actually pretty common. Uh, yeah, the, because of the doping involved, you will get a Zener breakdown at a relatively low voltage for if you reverse bias a base emitter junction. And actually they make pretty decent uh, Zener diodes, so you can certainly use them that way if you current limit them. But this tells me that, uh, that both the junctions in this little NPN transistor are good. So again, it doesn't tell me much about its gain or other characteristics, but it's a simple way 
of uh, just verifying that hey this thing's not open or shorted or dead so uh, so simple circuit like this variants that you'll find all over the internet again you can search for octopus component tester or oscilloscope component tester you know there's lots of ways you can search and find uh, variants of that schematic but uh, that's how it works and uh, if you've got a scope with XY mode you've got yourself a very simple curve tracer and uh, be really quick to kind of go sorting through your junk box parts so anyway, thanks for watching, and co uh, comments, suggestions, uh, questions are always welcome. Love to hear from you all. Thank you.